welcome my dear students good morning today we are going to start a new chapter so this is the second chapter in your first puc topics the first chapter we had recently finished was units and measurements in these online sessions with the most possible way we have finished units and measurement numericals some more numericals see most of the numericals we have solved here in your online assignments and in your every week exams we have solved so many but still there are some numericals which you need to solve that we will be discussed once soon the class actual offline class begins we are expecting in very soon our offline classes will start at that time we will solve some more questions in units and measurements chapter anyhow the chapter in the most detailed way it's done and the other side in physics another track the basic mathematics is also going on that basic mathematics will be useful in this chapter called a motion in one dimension what is that a motion in one dimension this is the chapter number 2 in physics first let's start the chapter what is motion in one dimension look at the interesting thing a motion in one dimension and a motion in two dimension these two together called as kinematics what is this kinematics kinematics is the branch of physics where we study about the motion of a body without considering without considering the cause of motion generally the cause of the motion is the force in motion in one dimension and two dimension and will be never consider the force we we'll just talk about the force but we will not take into the consideration while solving the numericals or while discussing the concepts we only concentrate about the motion of a body that's it without considering the cause of the motion that's called kinematics kinematics after motion in one dimension and two dimension there will be a chapter called laws of motion and this is the chapter comes under the branch of physics called dynamics what is this dynamics dynamics is the branch of physics in which we study about the motion of the body by considering the cause of the motion we will consider the cause of motion here we will not consider the cause of the motion here but the cause of the motion is obviously a force my dear students i hope you understand why these two chapters are called kinematics and this chapter is called dynamics right it's called kinematics all right now you all know a coordinate system from the lower classes you will be keep on learning coordinate axis so this is called the origin and this is also called the reference point what is it called a reference point origin from the reference point particle can move along positive x axis or negative x axis positive y axis 
are along negative y axis this is called straight line motion so the body can move along positive x axis positive y axis or positive so negative x axis or negative y axis this is called motion in one dimension if the particle is moving in this way so this is called two dimension motion not along x axis not along y axis may be positive or negative so even if the body is moving in this way that is called a motion in two dimension right if there is no particular direction is specified according to the reference point according to the coordinate system and this is the coordinate system in which the particle is moving that means particle is changing its position according to the time this is the coordinate system is called frame of reference what is that frame of reference so simple most of the students will have confusion what exactly meant by the frame of reference and they leave it without looking at it they think that is difficult no simple and this coordinate system when this coordinate system is included the time when it is included that means for example a particle is started from here and reached here after 10 seconds time right so this is positive x axis let me say so this is 7 meters particle is started from origin which is also called reference point and started moving towards positive x axis 7 meters in 10 seconds so this is called the reference frame frame of reference when this coordinate system is included is included the time then it is called frame of reference the use of the frame of reference is more when it comes the chapter called laws of motion dynamics all right now we already discussed we have already discussed state of rest and state of motion already we have discussed now see how much easy it will be so the reason for learning almost one and half month we have constantly learned the basics of physics from 9th standard and 10th standard the basics of the physics we have discussed that is useful here now state of rest and state of motion look at here if the position of a body is not changing with the time we can say the body is in the state of rest position need not to be changed but the time will change time is always an increasing physical quantity right you cannot see the time remains constant or you will never see the time goes back time will always increases 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 and the position of a body is not changing in that case you can say the body is in the state of rest when you see the body is in the state of motion when the position of a body is changing according to the time i have told you time will definitely changes but the position is also changing with respect to time so then you can say the body is in the state of motion so to know whether the body is in the state of rest or in the state of motion the position and time these two physical quantities are very 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 important so this position this position is represented with a symbol x position just general notation there is no specific thing like we need to only represent with x it's not like that so generally position of a body is represented with a symbol x small x this is about state of rest and state of motion now distance and displacement the distance and displacement what is distance here distance is the total path covered by a body distance is the total 
path covered by a body irrespective of the initial point and the final point wherever may be the initial point and the final point they may be at the same place or they may not be at the same place the total path covered by a body is called distance displacement is the shortest path traveled by a body between initial and final points the shortest path is always a straight line path shortest path is always a straight line path clear my dear students distance is a scalar quantity and displacement also is scalar quantity distance and displacements both are length and both si unit is meter sorry displacement is a vector quantity really so displacement is a vector how the displacement is a vector quantity and why it is vector quantity i'll tell you now listen to me carefully there are two points a and b right a body is reached a to b in this path the total path traveled by the body is called distance that's called path length total path traveled by the body the shortest path traveled by the body is called the displacement this is the shortest path. as i mentioned it is the shortest path that must be a straight line path see there is a specific direction between initial point and final point the shortest path means there is a specific direction is known and displacement is a vector quantity right it must have direction the direction of the displacement is always from initial point to the final point so the direction of the displacement is always from initial point to the final point in this way all right my dear students i hope it's very clear to you so this is the distance and displacement so remember one thing you are not in your 9th standard or in 7th standard the same things are present in 7th standard as well as 9th standard then 11th standard if you start if we start discussing about distance and displacement in the 9th standard level so we will we'll, it is impossible to finish the syllabus of your first puc or second puc topics right the same motion in one dimension distance displacement speed velocity are present in ninth standard also so those are called basics now the biggest advantage with anand medical academy is already the basics physics we have already finished you just go back to your previous videos distance displacement speed velocity acceleration deceleration uniform speed non uniform speed average speed average velocity all those basics are available in the youtube you check it and listen to these classes it will be very useful for you clear now we will go in deep concepts of distance and displacement now all right my dear students let's see some basic examples with some applications of distance and displacement some straight line example let's take first straight line example a body is starting from point a reach to the point b of 50 meters distance from b to c it is 25 meters distance from c to d it is another 25 meters that's it initial point and the final point question is what is the distance and displacement from 
ए टू डी ए टू डी डिस्टेंस इज समझ डिस्टेंस इज द टोटल पाथ ट्रेवल्ड बाय द बॉडी फिफ्टी मीटर्स ट्वेंटी फाइव मीटर्स सेवेंटी फाइव प्लस ट्वेंटी फाइव इट्स हंड्रेड अंडरस्टैंड डिस्टेंस इज हंड्रेड मीटर्स व्हाट इज द डिस्प्लेसमेंट डिस्प्लेसमेंट इज द शॉर्टेस्ट पाथ बिटवीन इनिशियल पॉइंट एंड द फाइनल पॉइंट शॉर्टेस्ट पाथ बिटवीन इनिशियल पॉइंट एंड द फाइनल पॉइंट Shortest path is a straight line. Remember, again, I am telling you when displacement you are finding, identify the first point and the last point. Whatever may be, whether the body is moving in a straight line, or a triangle shape, or a hexagon shape, or in a circle, initial point, final point, identify, draw a straight line, find the length of the straight line. That's called the displacement. Okay. so displacement from a to d is also 100 meter so what you can find here distance and displacements can be same okay distance and displacement can be same now now find from a to b b to c carefully a to b b to c and C to B. Look at the path carefully. What is the distance and displacement? See, so simple. Slowly, step by step, we are increasing the level of the concept. So, distance and displacement. Look at here. Distance A to B, fifty. B to C, twenty-five, seventy-five. C to B. Again, it's coming back. C to B, twenty-five. Distance is fifty plus twenty five plus twenty five. It is hundred meters. Remember, what we are doing here is total path we are calculating. That's it. Irrespective of the direction, whether it is moving back or moving forward. So, irrespective of the direction, we are finding the total path length. That's hundred. Displacement. Displacement. Displacement is. A to B fifty, B to C twenty five, C to B twenty five. What is the initial point A? What is the final point B? However, whether it moves forward or backward, again forward, again backward, it doesn't matter to us. Find the initial point and the final point. Initial point is A, final point is B. Draw a straight line. A to B. What is the value of the straight line? Fifty meters. So displacement is fifty meters. Here, what happens? Distance is equal to displacement. Distance is greater than displacement. So I am writing whatever my identifications are there. I am writing here. So distance is greater than. Displacement at the same time, distance is equal to displacement. Clear? Now, distance can be less than displacement. So that's a question in NEET exam. Not only in NEET exam, even the JEE exams also questions can be asked in this way. Is there any possibility of distance will be lesser than displacement? Distance will be lesser than displacement. It's impossible. But distance will be greater than displacement or equal to displacement. When it is equal to displacement, look at here. As long as the body is moving in the straight line without turning back, when it turns back, distance value will be increases. Displacement will be decreases. Okay, so. And this is the condition is most important when this condition takes place. I'm talking about sorry, this condition. So distance will be equal to displacement when you know as long as very important as long as so the body is moving in a straight line. As long as the body is moving in a straight line without turning back. Without turning back, you can say the body will have the distance and displacements values are same. 
the body will have speed and velocity values are seen. The body will have average speed and average velocities are seen. So I'm writing here itself. Distance is equal to displacement. Speed is equal to velocity. Average speed is equal to average velocity. Again and again, I'm not going to tell you because many times we have done this in the basics. So distance is equal to displacement, speed is equal to velocity, average speed is equal to average velocity. When? When? As long as the body is moving in a straight line without turning back, once it starts turning back, so the value of distance increase, the value of speed will increase, the value of average speed will increase. Okay? Alright? This is how we learn physics. This is how we develop our concepts. Come back. A to B. B to C. C to D. D to A. A to X. Where is X? You may get a question. X is here, lies here. X lies here of 10 meters. A to X distance is 10 meters. Now in this case, what is the distance? And what is the displacement, my dear students? A to B, B to C, C to D. You know, A to B, B to C, C to D is 100. Again, D to A. Yes, it is 100. All right. What is the displacement till here? A to B, B to C, C to D and D to A. What is the displacement here? So, can I say the displacement is 0? Yes or no? Distance will not be zero. From here to here, when the body is starting from A and reached back to the point A, displacement is zero, but distance is not zero. Now, A to X also let's include from here. It started from here and reached back here, again started moving forward, backward. So, distance will be 500 plus 100, 200 plus 10. 210 meters. Displacement will be what is the starting point? A. What is the final point? X. A. X. Right? But our started direction is this one. But finally the body is moved in this direction. So that is why I can say it is negative. Displacement is the distance between two points. Final and initial. Final and initial. Final and sorry, initial and final. Initial and final. So, what is the distance of straight line path here? 10 meters. So, just the minus indicates the body started in one direction and finally moving in another direction. So, that's a displacement. Displacement can be negative, but distance cannot be negative. Okay. So, my identification I'm writing here displacement can be negative, but distance can never be. Okay, and from this relation, distance divided by displacement, which is greater than or equal to 1. Just, I have just taken this displacement to here into the denominator, then here 1 is left. Okay, so distance divided by displacement is greater than or equal to 1. Here itself, speed divided by velocity is greater than or equal to 1. Average speed divided by average velocity will be greater than or equal to 1. If you interchange this displacement by distance, it will be less than or equal to 1. Then it goes on. This is how distance strike line examples can be discussed. And let's see the example of a triangle, right? If the body is moving in a triangle path, and let us check how the distance and displacement can be discussed. Triangle path. Let's take a uh, body starting from point A, reached 3 meters here to the B. From B to C, it is reached a 4 meters. Now the question is, see, both are perpendicular to each other. Now the question is, what is the distance 
and displacement and from A to C the question is from A to C A to B, B to C distance is how much? 3 plus 4, it's 7 meters displacement, I told you displacement means identify the first point and the last point identify the initial point and the final point to get here A to C alright became hypotenuse so 3, 4 and it will be 5 meters so displacement is how much? 5 meters. According to Pythagoras theorem, it is 5 meters. Sometimes question can also be asked like this. This 5 will be given, this 4 will be given, and they ask you to find this side. This side is 3 meters. I think in basic mathematics also you discuss this one. In physics, this you have discussed in 7th standard or 6th standard only, but still, even in our basic physics also we taught this. So this is how triangle shape questions you can solve. Okay. Now another example. Circle. If the body is moving in a circular path also, you can how how, how you can solve the questions. Let's see. So this is the circle. Body is starting from point A. The radius of the circle is R. Okay, body is starting from point A and reach to the point B. The point B is at other diametric end. A to B, distance and displacement. What is distance and displacement from A to B? A to B distance is equal to, see, from here to here, that is called half of the circumference. So that is pi r, all right. And displacement. Simple. I told you clearly. Displacement means just draw a straight line length between initial and final point. So initial point is here, final point here. Just draw a straight line. Always displacement is directed from initial to final point. So A to B. What is the length of this? So this is radius plus radius. So that is equal to 2 times the radius. Okay. Question will ask in this way, my dear students. A body is moved from A to B. What is the ratio of distance to the displacement? What is the ratio of distance to the displacement? So, pi r by 2 r, it is pi by 2 answer. In this way, questions will be asked. What is the ratio of displacement to the distance? It will be 2 by 5. <coughs> All right. Now, the body is starting from A to X. A to X. What is distance and displacement? Simple. What is distance and displacement? A to X. The body is moving from A to X. Distance. From here to here it is pi r. So half of it is pi r by 2. So the distance is pi r by 2. And displacement. These students. Displacement. So displacement, remember, so A to X, do not get confused with the curved path here. Always finding displacement is possible only if you draw a straight line between A and X. Straight line between initial and final points. And this is R. And this is R. So the angle between this is 90. Then you can use the Pythagoras theorem to find this length. A to X, to find this length. How you will find the Pythagoras theorem? So this is R and this is R. What is this? What is this? So this will be this. Imagine this is X. Okay. So X square is equal to R square plus R square which is equal to 2 R square. So finally your X is equal to root 2 into R. So what is this x value? Root 2 r. Displacement is root 2 r and distance is pi r by 2 in this case from a to x. Okay. Clear? From a to x, x to b, b to y. Exactly till here. Let's see. What is that? So uh, my dear students, let me write here so that you will understand well. A to X, X to B, B to Y. So that is the distance and displacement I need. So this is distance. And here the displacement. So what is the distance, students? 
a to x, x to b, b to y. See, pi r by 2, pi r by 2, distance, total path covered by the body. Pi r by 2, pi r by 2, pi r by 2. How much? It's 3 pi r by 2, isn't it? What is displacement? Simple displacement. A is the initial point, y is the final point. Draw a straight line. It is r and this is also r. So you have this root 2r already is there. So root 2r. Sometimes a question can also be asked to find the ratio of these two. Okay. For example, if a body is starting from point A and move like this and finally reach to the point A, what is the distance? So A to A by moving X, B, Y and finally A. So distance will be 2 pi r because the total circumference of the circle is the path travelled and displacement will be 0 because it started from initial point and reached back to the same point. You can say the displacement is 0. Right? You know with a single formula we can solve all these cases a to b, a to x, a to a, a to x, b, b to y. With a single formula you can solve all these cases and that's what we will be discussing now my dear students. Now with the single formula To find the distance and displacement covered, especially displacement covered. Distance is so simple, displacement covered in a circular path, right? So if a body is moving in a circular path, if a body is moving in a circular path, right? First thing, let's take this origin body is starting from point P radius is R and reach to the point Q here also the line joining the center and the point is R R radius Body is traveling from P to Q. So I am not representing with the direction. Direction if I represent, distance will become vector. Distance is a scalar. I will not represent here. Body is moving from P to Q. So this is called length of the arc, isn't it? Length of the arc is PQ. And this R is making an angle at the center of the circular path is theta. Carefully see. Theta is angle made by the arc at the center of the circle. So PQ is equal to length of the arc. R is radius of the circular path. Radius of the circle. We know the concept called plane angle. Angle is equal to length of the arc by radius. So length of the arc is PQ divided by radius R. Okay. Clear? So if you want to find length of the arc, so that is PQ which is equal to r theta. So this PQ is called distance. Yes or no? Path traveled. Distance. Distance is equal to r theta. Formula for distance traveled in circular path. Displacement. So simple. This is the important part. In one of the neat exams also this question asks displacement. See how simple it is. What I told you, to find displacement, you must draw a straight line between the initial point and the final point along with the direction. Okay. 
to find it just draw a perpendicular bisector here so this side angle theta by 2 and this side angle is also theta by 2 theta is div exactly divide the theta into two parts so there is a triangle if carefully observe there is a triangle here right as this angle is 90 look at this carefully imagine this is x from here to here and imagine this is x from here to here because, because this angle is also theta by 2 and this angle is also 90 and of course this is r and this is r right let's take this triangle let us take this triangle what is a triangle it's o p and here let me write uh, the name here is a o a p from triangle o a p i can write sine theta by 2 which is equal to sine angle is what opposite side by hypotenuse for this sine theta by 2 what is opposite side x by hypotenuse is r okay so from here x is equal to r into sin theta by 2 x is equal to r into sin theta by 2 so we need 2x we need from p to q strike line distance so 2x will be equal to 2 times r sin theta by 2 so this is called a displacement which is equal to 2r sin theta by 2 it is applicable for any kind of for, for any point to point displacement in the circular path okay let us take one simple example right so one simple example let's take so this is the circle from here to here point a is here two diametric endpoints i have taken you know a distance in this case will be pi r a displacement in this case will be 2r okay so let us use this with these formulas so distance is how much here so distance is equal to r into theta r into what is theta here the body starting from point this is the center okay starting from here this is called the length of the arc now so length of the arc is making an angle theta what is this theta can i say it is pi 180 180 degrees 180 degrees this is 180 degrees okay so r into pi it's pi r look at here distance is pi r see distance is pi r displacement so this is displacement it's 2 r sin theta by 2 2 into r into sin pi by 2 because theta is pi theta is pi so formula 2 r sin theta by 2 into r into sin pi by 2 sin pi by 2 is 90 right sin 180 by 2 is sin 90 sin 90 is 1 so 2r into 1 so what is the displacement in this case it's 2r my dear students like this take for any case you will get whatever we have discussed in the last slide this is how we can discuss distance and displacement in detail just pause the video and revise the topic and get ready for your 10 online questions. Thank you so much. All the very best.